Hi, everyone. Welcome to your last unit of the year. Um, we are going to learn about something called mono meals. So the first thing we should probably do is define what a mono meal is. And so we're going to write down the definition here. Um, a mono meal is basically just an expression consisting of one term. And I'll explain what that means. So an expression. consisting of one term. So first of all, an expression, remember, is really just um, a mathematical, um, I don't want to say sentence, <laughs> something that has um, no equal sign, something that can only be simplified, it can't be solved. Um, and so you'll see this, and when it, when it says one term, it basically means that everything is connected by multiplication. Um, and so you're not going to see the adding or subtracting. Um, everything is going to be one piece. So let me give you some examples that will hopefully help you understand this. So a monomial might be something like 4AC. Okay, so that's considered one term because all three of those things are connected by multiplication, so it makes it one term. Um, you can even have some exponents, so something like x squared y. That's considered one term, again, because x squared is connected by, to y by multiplication. You might have something without any variables in it, so maybe something like negative 5 halves. That's considered a monomial because it is only one thing. Um, and, you know, you might have something super long, negative 16x squared, b to the third, z to the fifth, okay? Um, again, all of those are connected by multiplication, so it makes it one term. Let me give you some non-examples, too, because I think that will help. Um, so there are things called binomials, which might look like something like 2x squared plus y to the fourth. That's considered a binomial because it's an expression consisting of two terms. Okay, so as soon as you see that plus in there, that makes it um, have two different terms. Or maybe you'll see x squared plus 3x minus 10. That is considered a trinomial because it has three terms. So adding and subtracting are the things that separate terms. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense as far as what a monomial is. And so in this unit, we're going to do all operations with monomials. Today we're going to focus just on adding and subtracting. Um, and so here are the rules that we have to think about when we're adding and subtracting monomials. First of all, your variables must be, in, must be the same in order to add or subtract. Okay, so if you think back to earlier in seventh grade when you learned about combining like terms, that's really adding and subtracting monomials. We just didn't call it that. Um, but that's the idea here, is you can't combine anything that is not a like term. Okay, so your variables and your exponents have to be the same in order to combine them. And if you can't combine anything, you just leave it. Okay, so let's take a look here. Um, in number one, first thing I'm going to look and make sure of is that these two monomials are alike, and they are. They both have an x, and the x is to the first power, and so I can combine them. So the rule is that we have coefficients here, and the coefficients get added. Okay, so 17 plus negative 25 is negative 8. And then what we do is we keep our variables and exponents the same. So I would get negative 8x. And that's it. Okay, for number two, first thing we'll look for is are these like terms? They are. They both have a y squared. So the rule is add your coefficients. Negative 23 plus negative 6 is negative 29. And we keep our variables and exponents the same. So we keep y squared. Number three, do we have like terms? We do. A to the third BC is common in both monomials. So the rule is add your coefficients. Negative 15 plus 6 is 9, negative 9. And we keep 
our variables and exponents. So we keep a to the third BC. Number four, we have like terms again. Great. The rule is we add our coefficients. And in this one, the second term here, um, the coefficient is a negative one. So if you don't see a number written there, you can assume that it's either positive one or in this case, negative one. So 38 plus negative one is 37. And then we keep our variables and exponents the same, x squared y. Number five, here we have things that are not like terms. So p q to the fifth r is not the same as p q r to the fifth. Okay, so even though the p's are the same, it doesn't matter. The entire term has to be the same. And so I can't add these together. So my answer is exactly what's written here. There's nothing I can do. Okay, so that's it. Number six, um, again, I don't have like terms. So even though the a squared is the same, the entire term has to be the same. So a squared b and a squared c, I cannot combine. So my answer is just what the original question was. Okay, number seven, they are like terms. They both have an a, c, so I'm gonna deal with my coefficients here. Um, so I'm gonna do negative 48 minus 12, or negative 48 plus negative 12, which is negative 60, and I keep my variables and exponents the same, so a, c. In something like number eight, um, we have different terms here, but some of them can be combined. So I can combine 13y squared and 4y squared. That will give me 17y squared. And then I can combine the 9z with the negative 31z to give me negative 22z. Number nine, I have like terms, mn and mn. So I'm going to go ahead and do negative 8 minus negative 19, which is really negative 8 plus 19, which is 11. And I keep the mn the same. Okay, number 10, I have some that are like terms. xy squared and xy squared can be combined. So negative 17 minus 5 is negative 22 xy squared. And then this middle term here can't be combined with anything else, so I'm just going to leave it 2xz. Okay, so what I would recommend now is stopping the video and trying the right column on your own and then checking back to see if you got them correct. Okay, so for number 11, if you did this correctly, you should be getting negative 68rs to the fourth. Number 12 is negative 50 xy squared. Number 13, I'm going to do my work on the side here, 2 fifths minus 1 third. I need a common denominator of 15. So this would have been 1 fifteenth cd squared. Number 14, keep change, change, negative 44 a squared, b squared. Number 15 is negative 34s. Number 16 is negative 57, m to the fifth, n to the seventh. Number 17, there's no a's to combine here, so I'm going to leave it 8a plus 2b. Number 18, these are not like terms, and so I cannot subtract them. And so my answer stays that. Number 19, keep change change, is 4ST. And lastly, number 20, negative 49AC squared D. Okay, so hopefully those all made sense to you. Now we're going to look at some applications of adding and subtracting monomials. 
So number 17 on the back says, express the perimeter of the rectangle in simplest form. Okay, so remember perimeter of a rectangle is two times the length plus two times the width. And so if I were to substitute in what I know here, the length of my rectangle is 7x plus 1. And the width of my rectangle is x minus 3. And so we've actually done this earlier in the year where we've had to simplify expressions like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is distribute. So that's going to give me 14x plus 2 plus 2x minus 6. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and add my monomials. Okay, so combine like terms, which we've done. This is 16x oops, minus 4. And so that is considered your perimeter in simplest form. Okay, let's do the same thing with the triangle. So perimeter of a triangle is just to add the three sides together. And so I'm going to do that. Remember, it doesn't order, it doesn't matter the order that you add these sides together as long as you're adding all three. So I'm just going to choose to do this order. And now we can add our monomials. So 3y plus 1y plus 6y would give me 10y. And 5 plus negative 4 would give me 1. So that is my perimeter in simplest form. Okay, the next few here, um, we are given these problems verbally. And so we have to be really careful with our order that we set these up. So number 19 says, subtract 9a from negative 15a. So I want to make sure that you know this means that when you're subtracting 9a from that, the negative 15a should go first, and I'm subtracting 9a from it. So that's what my setup would look like. So if you go ahead and you figure that out, they are like terms. So I'm going to get negative 24a. Um, for 20, it says from 5x to the fifth, subtract 2x to the fifth. And so that order would actually stay exactly as it is. And that's going to give me 3x to the fifth. For number 21, subtract negative 3xy squared z from 10xy squared z. So in this order, we're taking negative 3 from 10. So the 10xy squared z goes first. And be careful here, it's minus negative 3xy squared z. So you have to be really careful that you're not only putting the order correctly, but noticing that you have a double negative there, which means my answer is 13xy squared z. Okay, so in these last three, um, I'm asking you to create an addition problem or a subtraction problem in, to get these as answers. So go ahead and pause the video, um, try them out. I'm going to come back on and show you some examples of what I did, um, and hopefully you can tell if you were right based off of my examples. All right, so for 22, I'm just going to choose, it says create an addition or a subtraction problem. So if I did an addition problem, I might say negative 15ab plus negative 5ab. That would give me negative 20ab. For 23, I have to create an addition problem. So I'm going to choose to do negative 10x squared y squared z squared plus negative 8x squared y squared z squared and that will give me negative 18 x squared y squared z squared and the last one they want a subtraction problem where you get negative 16 pi for the answer so i'm going to do negative 9 pi minus 7 pi and that will give me negative 16 pi Okay, so if you have any questions, let me know. Um, but that's it for adding and subtracting monomials.